This is not about my story, but someone from my church, and he wanted to share his experience with anyone else. He's a 32-year-old man, and his pseudoname is Mark. He's a fairly big guy, and this situation took place when he was on his way home from work. He said that he had lost his phone one week before this whole situation happened, so he couldn't call and get any help during the story. It was quite late, around 11 p.m. He had finished work and was walking to a taxi stop location, and when he got there, a few people were standing around waiting as well. After about two minutes, he noticed that there was a minivan approaching. Usually, minivans are cheaper than taxis, and he felt tired that day, so he decided to take the minivan. He sat on a seat, and there was a young boy seated in the passenger side next to the driver who was collecting the fare. And then, two other boys who looked like teenagers also boarded the minivan and sat in the seats in front of him. Once the minivan took off, after about five minutes, the boy asked if they would like to drink some coke. The boys accepted and started drinking. And they also gave it to Mark. Mark was also feeling thirsty, so he took it, but only a sip. Not much later, he started feeling drowsy. Just before he about laid his head on the seat beside him, he noticed that those two boys were already knocked out. After he laid his head down, he heard noises coming from the back seats. Two people were talking in a different language. The car was passing a big signboard that showed Crest Chicken Farm. And then he finally passed out. When he got up, he found himself inside a big shed-like barn, and there were some tools on a big table. He was on the floor, and the other two teenage boys were laying next to him. He still felt a bit drowsy, but he managed to get himself up as he was looking for an escape. He saw that the two boys were still passed out, so he tried waking them, but they wouldn't budge. As Mark was kind of a big man, he tried to see if he could carry one of them, but it was hard to do because even Mark was having a hard time to stand properly. And then he heard voices. He took a peek from the door and three people were walking toward the big shed, coming from a house on the hill, which was quite close to the shed. Mark panicked and tried to look for another exit. He was looking around the place and he found one at the end of the shed, luckily. He approached quietly and escaped as fast as he could. At this point, his vision was all blurry, but he managed to find a fence door and unlocked it. He heard the people shouting, but he ignored. He just kept on running. When he finally reached his house, it was early morning, around 5 a.m. His wife was up all night waiting for him and ran out the front door as soon as she saw him. He collapsed and slept for almost the whole day. When he woke up and finally got a chance to explain to his wife what had transpired that night, he remembered about the other two boys who were still there. Then he contacted the police immediately. He told the police about the road signs and a big billboard for Crest Chicken Farm and other things that he could remember. About two weeks after, there was a police report about how they found two teenage boys' bodies in a lake and advised that when they examined the bodies, all their organs were missing. Mark just stood in fear. And as the event was too traumatic for him, Mark had to quit a job for a while.